Today, I am in San Anselmo, California, and this was another place that was suggested by you guys. And I appreciate you sending me over these suggestions. I've never been to this area before. It seems like a very nice, peaceful and quiet neighborhood to shoot a video. So I'm glad to be over here. Weather's like 77 degrees and sunny today. It's a little bit warmer than where I'm over at in Tiburon. It was only like uh, 68 over there, but still it feels pleasant. It's, it's really nice. There's some crazy stuff going on right now, guys, especially when it comes to insurance. We've covered so many different insurance stories on the channel, but this is gonna be a big nail in the coffin for so many people, unfortunately. And different insurance companies have recently announced that they are going to stop writing policies in places where lots of natural disasters happen. And the policies that they're gonna to continue to write are not going to include coverage for natural disasters. So like this area we're walking in right now could maybe be considered a fire hazard area because there's lots of trees around. So the more of a thick forested area you're in, in California, then probably your higher the fire your risk is similarly to in Miami and really all of Florida and different coastal areas, we are susceptible to hurricanes and they're gonna stop covering this stuff, guys. That's very scary to hear because so many people live in these areas and there's a lot to unbox with this. So right now you have Allstate, American Family Insurance, Nationwide, Erie Insurance and Berkshire Hathaway are telling regulators they are going to exclude protections from various weather events and raise monthly premiums and deductibles in certain areas. And they're saying that it will cut out all damage caused by hurricanes, wind, and hail from policies underwriting property along coastlines and the same goes for wildfire country. So this covers a large chunk of basically Florida and California, which really are the two biggest states that are in trouble with this right now. If you think it's just Florida and California, it isn't, guys, because as we're going to get into this, you know, places that get a lot of lightning storms, places that get a lot of tornadoes, things like this are also at risk of losing coverage for those type of things as well. And they're not just looking at dropping coverage in places that are getting hit with all these disasters right now. They're also looking at dropping coverage in places where they think there's going to be more future disasters so even if you don't have anything going on so much in your area right now but they think you might in the future that's another reason for them to drop you so even if you feel like you live in a pretty safe area right now and you don't experience a lot of natural disaster doesn't matter guys you might actually get dropped because the insurance company sees your area and the future risk assessment as unfavorable to you which means See you later. And the irony in this is these places are the places that kind of need insurance the most, right? Because you are most, most likely to experience some sort of hardship or disaster that will actually make you need an insurance claim. And obviously insurance companies are waking up to this fact and they're just gonna discontinue coverage in these areas. So where is that gonna leave you know, home values in these areas? Where is it gonna leave current homeowners in terms of making sure their properties are protected? What's it gonna do when it comes to people that have a mortgage that, you know, can't get insurance? Like these are big issues that people are gonna be facing. Here's what Allstate's doing, for example. They are going to be limiting new auto and property and business insurance in areas that are most exposed to hurricanes. And they're gonna be implementing tropical cyclone and or wind and hail deductibles or exclusions where appropriate. So they're pretty much looking to get out of covering all the most important things that someone would actually need coverage for. Nationwide, the same thing. They're pulling out of all the fire prone areas in California, as well as all of coastal Florida, where they're most susceptible to hurricanes. And Nationwide is also looking at uh, wrapping up even more ways to mitigate their risk and exposure towards hurricanes by the end of this year. So you can rest assured that if you live in Florida or really anywhere that gets hit with hurricanes, pretty much the entire coastal United States on the eastern half of the country, you know, you could be seeing major changes to your policy coming by 2024. And just recent examples of this are we had Hurricane Idalia that just last week smashed into Florida. Places that haven't really ever been hit with a major hurricane before got slammed with that. Hawaii, who would ever would have thought that we would see those wildfires happen over there. That was pretty much a fluke incident as well. But we're seeing these things happen 
and these are areas that can be potentially in danger of losing coverage. And of course, insurance companies are blaming all of this on climate change, and I'm not even gonna get into that whole discussion with anybody here, but the reality is we are seeing more extreme weather events. How they're caused, that's up for debate, but it doesn't really matter, guys. The fact of the matter is, people are getting hit with more of these things, so much so that U.S. insurance companies have dispersed almost $300 billion in natural disaster claims over the last three years, and that's a record for a three-year period. And just in the first six months of 2023, it's about $40 billion that have been dispersed just for natural disaster claims alone. So if you look at this chart, here's some interesting data that they put out from these insurance companies, and it goes back to 2013. So we have pretty much 10 years of data here for claims that are paid out for natural disasters. And we can see in 2017, it shot up dramatically. And I know we had a lot of hurricanes that year, and I'm willing to guess that's the reason why, because I was in one of those hurricanes. It was Hurricane Irma. And after that, it started going down a little bit. But the interesting thing is this, guys. When, when you look at 2020 through 2022, those three years are the highest on record besides 2017. But one thing that's not mentioned here is like, okay, these are natural disaster claims, but what about the replacement value for all of these properties? What about the crazy pandemic that we had that caused uh, prices for repairs and materials and building supplies and labor costs, everything to absolutely skyrocket during this time? And of course, the claims amount, the number is going to be higher because of this anomaly that we ran into with our economy. But the insurance companies are kind of using this as an out because they can just look at this chart and say, well, you know, our natural disaster claims are the highest three years we've ever had in a row. Well, coincidentally, those three years are 2020, 2021, and 2022. So, <laughs> I mean, this sounds kind of like a cop-out to me. We're all paying for things that are cost extra right now. You know, we pay more than ever for gas, more than ever for housing, more than ever for insurance, right? That these guys are trying to take our money and, and just leave. More, more than ever for cars, more than ever for everything. But insurance companies feel like they shouldn't have to, that they're trying to limit the amount that they have to pay out every year. It's crushing their business because they have to pay out more and more every single year. Well, yeah, because everything costs more and more now, guys. That's just like the name of the game. It's the world we're living in. So it's like saying that I wanna buy a house right now, but I only wanna pay 2017 prices. Well, good luck. It's probably not gonna happen. But that's exactly what these insurance companies are attempting to do right now. The other problem with insurance though is it's regulated by the states on how much they can increase their policies every single year. So instead, what they'll do is they'll say, well, instead we're just not gonna write any policies here anymore because it's just too risky. And that's why you're seeing so many insurance companies just drop your coverage altogether because it's easier for them to do that than to collect a rate that they see profitable. And basically this is what they're saying. They're saying that many of the policy changes may be unfavorable to certain customers, but are important for the survival of the wider insurance market. And I get this, okay? It's not like I don't understand that insurance companies are not nonprofits. They need to turn a profit like any other business in order to stay in business. Otherwise there will be no insurance companies left. And I get that guys. But the issue to me is you have all these insurance companies that collected premiums for 20, 30 years from people, and then they get dropped and they use that money that they collected and invested it in different market accounts to try to uh, make a profit on that. And some of that money ends up in their pocket and the other part of it ends up paying out claims somewhere else. But that person that paid in 30 years of claims gets nothing in return. So people are literally getting screwed over with this and the more people end up getting dropped, then the more it's just gonna cause chaos with everything in our economy, I believe, because if people can't get insurance on real estate, that's gonna be a huge problem when it comes to sales in the area, what a home could potentially be worth, when it comes to being able to get financing on the property. There's gonna to have to be big reforms, I believe, when it comes to 
insurance, insurance requirements, and everything that goes along with it. Now the things that normally are covered with an insurance policy are fire, smoke, wind, hail, plumbing, snow and ice issues, and even vandalism and theft, also liability. And then if you want flood insurance, you have to pay extra for that. So basically the plan moving forward for these large insurance companies is they said that they're, they plan to continue to offer baseline policies to clients in disaster prone areas. So maybe that are supposed to cover those damages we just listed, but will exclude any sort of a natural disaster. So that's the most likely problem that people will happen. So I guess on the one hand, it's okay that you're still gonna have some coverage, but in order to have coverage for the most likely problem you're probably gonna encounter, you're gonna be on your own. And they're saying that consumers who still want to have those protections would need to purchase a supplemental policy or shop for insurance from another provider. So typically insurance companies rely on their risk models to have projections of what they think is gonna happen when it comes to their payouts and you know all the natural disasters that are supposed to happen. And of course, the business model is always the same. Let's collect the maximum amount in premiums that we can and minimize the amount of payouts. And this is the very latest iteration of that, essentially. Now they're saying because of the variability in weather patterns that hurricanes are hitting at weird times now, you have wild, wildfire season that's lasting all year now, and this makes it so that they can no longer rely on their previous risk projections and this is why this is all happening. So then you have these state-backed insurance companies, like in Florida, we have Citizens Insurance. Here, I think it's called Safe or something like that. I forgot the name. You have these companies that are trying to make up the difference and basically provide affordable insurance for these type of disasters for people. But then the problem becomes if too many people get piled up onto these state-run insurance policies and something actually does happen and they need to pay out everything all at once, it's gonna be a disaster, guys. And what this is actually causing people to do, like we covered last week, is you have a lot of people that are just deciding to go without insurance now, guys, because people just can't afford the rates that they want to charge to have all the necessary coverage and of course not everybody can do that in fact the vast majority can't because if you have a mortgage you're simply not allowed to and they will put forced placed insurance in effect for you if you don't pay your homeowner's insurance so don't even try to do that if you have a mortgage because you will regret it because you'll end up paying way more for this insurance that barely will protect you at all and it just won't be worth it but i will say that these insurance executives have a point because one thing that they said is that when you see insurance companies pulling out in mass because of the cost of rebuilding homes in florida is bankrupting them then it's either hubris or folly to think the state wouldn't be bankrupted stepping in to help. And I agree with that point because we can't have everybody on citizens insurance and here in California, they can't have everybody on the safe insurance. I don't remember if that's the term guys, but you know what I mean. It's just not sustainable. Florida already got hit with their first major hurricane this year. There could be another one. There could be another one after that. And if all these people that need to make a claim are on citizens insurance, it's game over, guys. And since Citizens never actually runs out of money, they have the ability to make assessments across all different types of insurance throughout the rest of the state. Meaning that if you have any other type of insurance policy, including homeowners insurance, they can raise those rates, even with private companies, and collect that difference in order to make up for it. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. And basically, whenever these disasters hit, this will end up making insurance more unaffordable for everybody, even if you were not in one of the disaster areas. So even though you don't get hit, guys, we all pay, essentially. And this is honestly one of the number one things besides the crazy cost of living in Miami now that actually makes me think about leaving the area because I know that this situation is probably not gonna get any better, at least not anytime soon. And if it does, that would be great but we need to see a lot of new insurance companies come back into Florida in order to really make a difference on this. And so far, we're not seeing it so much. It makes me concerned of how much we're gonna have to continue to pay more and more and more in order to, to just live there. And here's something that literally backs up whatever I just said. You have one of my neighbors here that posted another post on the next door community. And they said that we received a letter in the mail that our insurance company is dropping us this renewal cycle. The reason is the property is within three miles of the coast and the building is older than 2005. And she goes, I imagine that's the criteria that a lot of us are in. Has anyone found companies providing coverage? 
The current policy I have is managed by Allstate, but contracted out to a company called Castle Key. Allstate attempted to find a new insurer and said Citizens is the only other insurer in the area. Now, I know for a fact that that's not true, that it's not only Citizens, there are a few other ones, but the pickings are getting slim, guys. And like I said, like we were just talking about, if it comes down to the fact that literally the only company that will insure you is Citizens Insurance, that's it, you know? It's gonna be a bad situation moving forward. It puts a lot of us in great danger, essentially, of not knowing what our premiums are gonna be from year to year, because that used to be a very stable expense that homeowners could count on. And it's kind of one of those things I've been warning a lot of people here about on the channel, that these are major expenses now that can fluctuate wildly from year to year to the point where it can make it so people can't afford their current home. And some people like to just call it doom and gloom or you know scare tactics or whatever but this is actually happening to people so call it whatever you want but if you refuse to listen to it that's on you okay then you're going to be the one getting hit with the double or triple insurance bill next year and be shocked when it happens and honestly like i just went through this whole thing with you guys about insurance and once in a while, I'll do a little section in the video where I talk about the home prices in Miami and things are still pretty on fire, guys, which is crazy considering what we just talked about. And it's not even because everybody's buying in cash or anything like that. Look at these monthly market statistics from the July numbers, okay, from the Miami Association of Realtors. I have the median sales price went up 10.8% year over year for single family homes, okay? And the amount of people paying in cash is roughly still the same from 27 down to 26 percent so only a quarter of the transactions are cash that means 75 percent of those other people are getting a mortgage and 75 percent of those other people need to get insurance on the house which means they are paying a fortune for it if they're getting it we can also see inventories going down i'm not going to go through the whole list for you guys here but condos as well condo prices are up 10 and a half percent year over year in Miami right now. The closed sales numbers are obviously continuing to dwindle because no one can really afford to buy at these prices. And the condo sales is much different. You have 50% of these sales are in cash right now. So that is huge. And that means 50% of those people can decide to go without having insurance on their unit. But they can't avoid paying the insurance that's included in the HOA dues, okay? which is usually the largest chunk of your insurance expense because that covers the entire building. It's what's called the master policy. And that's the insurance in my building that went from $400,000 in 2022 to $800,000 in 2023. And I can't wait to see where it's gonna be going in 2024, guys, because honestly, if it goes like over a million dollars, that could be the last straw for me. I might just end up selling my place and I will do whatever I tell you guys on the channel. I'll make a good enough profit on that unit where I can afford to just uh, rent somewhere for a while and move somewhere cheaper till all this dust settles because this is getting insane. I don't wanna be a part of this, okay? You guys think that I'm just trying to scare people out of buying homes or, or whatever. Like I am doing what I tell people to do. Like. I bought a property, got a great deal on it, way below market value, check. Now it's appreciated in value, maybe thinking about selling it to collect that money, check. Oh, the expenses are getting too high on the property, maybe sell it while I still can, make a profit on it, and pocket the difference, look at renting for a while, and pay less than I pay for the mortgage, check. So it's not like I just talk about all these things and tell people, oh yeah, you should do this or that. Like, I don't, first of all, I don't really give anybody advice here on the channel, but I do what I think people should do. And I tell people what I think they should do, but it's up to you to make that decision if you want to do that or not. The point is, is I'm, I'm taking my own advice. And really the reason I wanted to bring up the Miami sales figures is because as you can see, Miami is still probably the hottest housing market in the country when you have these prices still up 10% year over year, guys, both for condos and for houses. And to me, that means it's a great opportunity to sell and get out of this while you still can because in 2025 the regulations are going to hit florida very hard with these new condo laws where everyone's going to have to have full reserves the hoa fees are going to absolutely skyrocket people won't be able to afford it people will be trying to sell in mass and if you think everyone's just going to run to a house and they're going to be protected there 
Guess again. Houses are super expensive, way more than condos, as you can see from the list. You know, median sale price for a house in Miami is $631,000. Median condo price is $420,000. So that's a pretty big gap. So most people that own a condo wouldn't even be able to afford a house in Miami, number one. And number two, the insurance is a big issue with the houses as well, you know? You pay way more in insurance premiums for the house than you pay having just a condo, okay? Like I think my insurance premium this year was like 1100 bucks to cover my entire condo. But the HOA fees have skyrocketed in order to pay the master policy, which is the majority of the insurance coverage that the building has. So lots of problems with this stuff, guys. And I'm giving you a heads up and a warning on all this. So that way, you know what's coming. And this video wasn't really meant to be entirely about insurance. I had actually more stories to cover, like I usually do. But this is such an important thing that I just had to go on a little bit of a rant about it and give you all of my opinions and ideas and what I think is happening with this and where I think all this is going because I think it's going to have a major impact on the housing market. Even in areas where they're not getting hit with insurance problems, right? You might see a lot of people like me that live in Florida that try to run to areas where insurance is still cheap, but for how long? How long is the insurance still going to be cheap in those areas and how long before it becomes a problem there? And insurance companies figure out a reason to stop covering you when you live in Georgia or when you live in Tennessee or wherever you live. So anyways, just keep an eye on your premiums. Make sure you shop around as much as you can if you get hit with a crazy increase and maybe consider moving guys if it gets too out of control. I know a lot of my Florida people, this is hurting them especially hard just like it is me and uh, it can only take so much, you know. Even if you can afford the increases, maybe there will be a coming a day where you can't. And that's kind of where I'm looking ahead into the future and just thinking, is it really worth it to, to live there anymore because of all this? So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.